Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel and welcome to machine learning and large language model tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to run LAMA 3.2 1 billion and 3 billion parameter models on Raspberry Pi in Linux Ubuntu. In particular, in this tutorial we use Raspberry Pi 5. We also created a separate tutorial on how to run LAMA 3.2 models on Raspberry Pi 4. However, Raspberry 5 is much faster than Raspberry Pi 4 and consequently we suggest to everyone to use Raspberry Pi 5. Some of you might not be familiar with LAMA and LAMA 3.2. So here is a brief introduction. LAMA 3.2 1 billion and 3 billion parameter models are the newest models in the LAMA family of large language models. They are highly compressed and optimized models and their purpose is to run on edge devices with limited memory and computational resources. On the other hand, Raspberry Pi can also be seen as an edge device. And let's try to run LAMA 3.21B and 3B on Raspberry Pi and let's see the performance. Our Raspberry Pi 5 computational platform is shown here. First of all, I install an active cooler on top of my Raspberry Pi 5 because an active cooler is really a must for Raspberry Pi 5. Otherwise, your processor and GPU will heat up very quickly. We have Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 GB RAM. We have installed an NVMe SSD with a capacity of around 500 GB. Here you don't see actually the NVMe SSD since it sits on a plate below my Raspberry Pi. However, you can see this ribbon cable that goes from the PCIe slot of Raspberry Pi 5 to my NVMe SSD. By installing an NVMe SSD we have significantly increased the read and write speed of our Raspberry Pi 5. We have created a separate video tutorial on how to install NVMe SSD in Raspberry Pi 5. Besides an NVMe SSD you can also use an, ex an external USB SSD. However, our suggestion is to avoid microSD cards since they are really slow. As a comparison, even a USB SSD is 10 times faster than a microSD card. And I try to run large language model on a Raspberry Pi 4 with a microSD card and it was really, really, really slow. A tutorial on how to install an NVMe SSD and how to set up a Raspberry Pi and Linux Ubuntu is given in the description below this video. Also, before we start with explanations, we need to emphasize this. In this tutorial, we are running Linux Ubuntu 24.04. However, you can also use any other supported version of Linux Ubuntu. We created a separate video tutorial explaining how to install Linux Ubuntu 24.04 on Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. A link is provided in the description below this video. And here is another comment. Some people like to install an official operating system for Raspberry Pi computers. However, I don't suggest you to do that because there might be a number of issues related to incompatibilities of some libraries or Python or PyTorch and other things. Now, since we are using a program to record our voice and screen, it might happen that at a certain point our recording will glitch due to the fact that CPU capacity is maxed out by the recording software and by running LAMA 3.2. As you will see later on, LAMA 3.2 will consume a lot of CPU power. Okay, let's start with explanations. First of all, let's open a terminal. And over here I'm going to resize this terminal such that you can see what I'm typing. And I deliberately increase the font over here of my terminal such that you can see 
clearly everything if you cannot see anything you also have this manual over here whenever you want to install a program a package or a software in Linux Ubuntu it's very important that you first update and upgrade everything consequently type sudo apt get update to update a list of packages and some other things enter your password updates are done basically every maybe even an hour or so there's always something happening and then let's upgrade sudo apt upgrade to upgrade everything and to keep everything up to date and let's press yes and then we have to wait everything will be upgraded not only software related to Llama and Llama but also other software necessary to run Linux Ubuntu okay now we can proceed what I like to do when I'm installing something I like to open a new terminal you can do it by clicking here and by typing top and over here you can see the CPU and memory consumption currently you can see that my CPU is largely cons consumed by this program called Kazam that's the program for recording this video we will install Llama 3.2 by first installing Olama. Olama is a framework and an API for running different large language models. It provides an easy to use interface to run different models. It also has a Python library that is very simple to use. First, we will install Olama and then we will install Llama 3.2 models. Now, First, we have to make sure that our computer allows for inbound connections on this port, 11434. To do that, we need to open a terminal, and inside of this terminal, we need to type this thing. This will allow the connections. We can install Olama in Linux Ubuntu by just running this command. This will actually download the Olama model, by using curl from this website and it will run this script and that's it simple as that and now here you need to be patient over here you can see top and you can see the computational resources what's being used etc you can see the curl over here how much CPU it's using not too bad good Another interesting thing to observe over here is that we are downloading Linux ARM64 bundle. This is because Raspberry Pi 5 has an ARM64 architecture. It doesn't have an AMD64 architecture and that's very important to keep in mind. And over here you can see where Olama is being installed. However, Olama also creates several other folders in our home folder and several other configuration files. In fact, it might be even challenging to uninstall Olama. I created a separate video tutorial explaining how to do that. Okay, let's analyze the response. Warning, no NVIDIA AMD GPU detected. Olama will run in CPU only mode and this is what we expected. Although a Raspberry Pi has a GPU, PyTorch cannot exploit this GPU. After Olama is downloaded and installed, it should be running in the background. To verify the installation, we need to open a web browser and we need to type this. This will actually go to this local host and to this port over here. So let's do that. You can simply copy and paste this series of numbers and let's see the output. The output is Olama is running. Consequently, Olama is running on our local host. And you can also investigate that by listing all the PID processes, or you can even look here. If you scroll all the way down, you should see something related to a llama or something similar. Okay, let's continue. Now, if you don't see this response over here, 
This means that Olama is not running, which might happen. So to start Olama manually, you just open a new terminal and in this terminal you start this, Olama serve. Now if I run this, I will get an error because address is already in use since my Olama is already running. However, if your Olama is not running, that is if you verify that web browser is not running, you can simply try to do this. Okay. Next, let's open a new terminal and let's verify that we can call Olama from this terminal. So type Olama and you should see something like this. This means that you can call Olama. And then you can type Olama list to list all the models. Currently we don't have any models, consequently everything will be empty here. Good, let's continue. Next, let me explain how to download the models. First of all, go to the Olama website and then over here search for Lama with two L's, 3.2 and then you should see something like this. Click here and over here you can see the models. Now, if you click here, you will see the available models. So click first on one B parameter model. This is the smaller model and this command will be generated. So copy this command, go over here and paste this command, but don't execute it. Change this run to pull. What's the difference? If you type run over here, the model will be downloaded and immediately executed. I don't want to do that. I just want to download the model and then later I will manually run it. So let's do this. So what will happen? The model will be pulled or downloaded from the remote repository and over here you can see that the model size is around 1.3 gigabyte that's actually a big big thing however my Raspberry Pi 5 has a disk of around 500, meg 500 gigabytes so I'm not worried okay next let's type Olama list to see the model and here it is it's being downloaded Next, let's repeat the same procedure for another model. Over here, click on 3B and this command will be generated. Copy this command, go back to the terminal and in the terminal type healer. Not Olama run, but Olama pull. And this will pull the model. And now here, be patient. Now, this model has the size of 2 gigabytes and consequently, it will take more time to download this model. And after several minutes, the model will be downloaded. So let's type Olama list and you can see the model. Here it is. Next, let's learn how to run these models. To run these models, we simply need to type Olama. This will call our Olama framework. Then we need to specify run and then we need to specify the name of the model. So let's start with a very small model, 1 billion parameter. And here, when I say very small, this is under quotes. And let's see. Now, the execution of the model might be slower since I'm actually recording my video. And consequently, this program for recording is consuming some CPU bandwidth. Okay, so let's ask a question. How to solve a quadratic equation so let's see and bank let's see this is done in real time and let's see solving a quadratic equation good can be done a bit tricky yes and let's see the CPU consumption over here you can see the CPU consumption it's 240 percent and again now what you can see that the execution might be slower since I'm actually recording the video. If I stop this video, it's going to be much faster. So let me try to do that and let's see what will happen. And once I stop the recording, the execution is much faster. It's actually very good. And you can see the response. This is truly amazing that we can run this large language model on this limited hardware, right? This is super nice. Okay, next, let's learn how to run the second model. To get out of the model prompt, just need to type by, and let's see again our model, models, and here they are. 
Next, let's run the second model. That is, let's run this model. So again, we need to type this, and instead of llama 3.2, 1 billion, we just need to write llama 3.2, 3 billion parameter model. And let's run this and let's see what happens. Again, since I'm recording, the execution might be slow. However, without recording, it should be much faster. Okay, let's see. Now the model is being loaded and the prompt is being bring up. Okay, and we can see the memory consumption. We can see basically that we have used the 7 gigabyte of memory over here and the left is are like like 1 gigabyte or something like that now you might even consider to increase this swap memory size and I created a separate video tutorial on how to do that okay so let's go back to the terminal and let's try to ask a question how to create an orange juice and here is the execution now this is 3 billion parameter model and again I expect that this will be slower for the two reasons the first reason is that the model is 3 billion parameter and the second thing is that I'm recording but still it's working right it's printing out something and it's not bad now if I stop recording this would be much faster so let me do that and after several minutes maybe one minute or so the response will be generated let's see ingredients freshly squeezed oranges optional sugar or honey ice cubes optional additional flavoring such as vanilla cinnamon or citrus zest. and here's the equipment we need a juicer strainer or cheesecloth large pitcher or jug etc so it looks good right this is basically a classical receipt to create or to make orange juice. For example, we can use Blender. Good. This is really awesome. So we can really run Llama 3.2, 1 billion and 3 billion parameter models on our Raspberry Pi that costs around $150 with all the additional stuff. Not bad. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, on my YouTube channel, there are more than, I think, 800 free video tutorials covering different topics, robotics, machine learning, control theory, control engineering, signal processing, 3D printing, 3D modeling, console multiphysics, etc. See you in the next video tutorial.